Right, well we can see our engine bay is looking rather dirty, a little bit neglected, so I think we'll start by uh, removing one or two key pieces. Spent a couple of hours today taking one or two bits off and uh, might have got a bit carried away. I think I did. <laughs> uh, a couple of things. So somebody's fitted brass welds plugs to this side, which is good. When they cracked, the one I had, I had two signals that cracked plugs. One was between, I think it was between there and there. I might have gone down. I think it was between these two. The second one was the turbo one I did. And when it was sold, the guy told us it was cracked. I actually didn't know. On this side, the Welsh plug I think that was giving us all the drama was that one there. So if I get a, where's my screwdriver? I'm looking through the camera lens. Yep, that'll do it. So this one hasn't had the plugs done. They're mild steel ones. There's one there, and there's two up there. So I think there's like five all told. There's another big one at the back there. So I think we'll do those. Got a trailer load of crap. The oil leak is a vent that's pouring out of here somewhere. Ugh. I'll have to clean that up and investigate it. I think it's coming out of there. Um, they're $130. I don't really want to pay that for an oil pump, for a fuel pump, sorry. But I'm not sure if we can get a um, kit for it. Starter will clean up nicely. It looks like it's been replaced at some stage. It looks far too um, anodized. This is the alternator. These are my favorites, these things. It's the single wire one with the external rig. Um, brilliant, brilliant things. I've got one on the XD, I've got one on the XC. The XW hasn't, because I like the old school rig on the firewall. Um, it's fairly quiet, it's all good. Oh, should we? Yeah, why not? More plating. Cool. There's our little plating box of stuff. We can clean that up beautifully. That'll come up like new. Beautiful. Let's have a quick look at what's in the wiper motor. I don't think it's easy to do these. I think it's, um, they've got a yeah, the commutator's at the front. There's four bushes, brushes. That's actually got some wear on it. Yeah, they're a pain in the ass today. I think what we'll do with that one... Oh, that's not that bad. Um, I might just lubricate that. i just oil it. It's got a ball at the end, and it's just a scented bronze type bush in it. Um, it's going to be a pain in the ass to put on, isn't it? I think we'll um, not do that. We'll put it together. But we might as well do these. I'll just give that a, a paint job. I think that's the best way to do it. But we can do this bit. Cool. So I want it to look, I want it to look like that. Not that. So put that away. And wipe that grease off. And these little screws, I have to just, I've got a piece of paper, I'll show you what I'm doing with those. I can put that thing away in safekeeping. Lots of loose, oily crap down the block, it's sort of pretty thick. This sort of thing works. So I'm just going to go around and get most of that off, just manually with a scraper. Um, this is my paint stripper scraper. And I don't want it on the drive because it will stain everything, so I have to be quite careful how I get it off, but we'll get there in the end. And then we'll have to clean that gasket off, that's full of asbestos, um, wet it down, scrape it off. Right, so I've just got this $3 can of degreaser. Um, I've got a couple of cans of it. From the reject shop, I actually had that can left over, so I've got three and a half cans. I'm just cleaning this up with a toothbrush. Um, I don't have a triple interceptor here, which is a drain designed for separating oil, and I don't want this going down the storm water, so I've got a bit of cardboard under here. So what I'm gonna do 
Let's do dirty in there. What I'm going to do is um, caustic stuff. This is pretty horrible. Is clean it up as best I can with this stuff. And once I've done all this, I can fold the cardboard up and throw a whole lot of the old seat covers under here and just use a minimal amount of water just to blast it off. I can even use thinner to start with. So I've got some of that. So the MG's engine was pretty dirty too, but I mean, it wasn't as bad as this, but what it meant was nothing went down the drain. It all went onto bits of cardboard and onto rags. But um, this stuff looks like it's gonna clean up quite well. If you look at that there, it's just all crud. Lovely bit of filler artistry. We've got a nice square corner. And a random one there. That was a bit cracked out. There. Not much, it's rebounding. This filler. Just give the engine a quick wipe, so I'm just gonna lift this up because I don't want to dirty it too much. This is on the back seat when I bought the car. It's a bit cleaner, isn't it? Uh, it's still a bit to clean up. I'll get a little Dremel, clean out some of that greasy crap. I'll have a look at the motor in a minute. Um, I'm more worried about this panel. It's all over the shop. Um, we've had a smack. If I was to replace this bit, I'd cut it, straighten it out, obviously, welded it because it's all stretched. Uh, it's not being welded this side. Only there, and I noticed at first it was all covered in filler. And you can see that lip there. There's a gap under there. That's no good. So I'm going to close all that. Close this. That's alright there, there, there. That, that all needs closing. And when we look at it with a bit of sheet metal, it's all over the joint. Problem I've got, I can beat this out fairly straight. I can fill it, I can rub it back, but with the opening and closing at the bonnet, it's going to crack again. It's always been slammed down here. Now, doors and boot lids and all that, bonnets, all those sorts of things you can fill because they've got their own structure. But this has something else coming down on it pretty hard. Now, the only thing I can think of doing is making a skin for it. Coming down and just meeting there. So it'll be bent along here. If we have it sort of like that, weld in here, maybe a tiny bit of fill there to hide that, or metal finish it if we're really good, which I don't think I am, and have a nice curve on it, I don't reckon it's worth hiding. If it's paint at all, it'll just look like a reinforcement panel that sits on top of the radiator support, it'll be all one colour, and I think that's better than filling all that, because getting behind it's a problem, it's got structure behind it. But it's all sort of, it's pushed in here, it's been brazed, it's a mess. So, I'll take advice on that, if anyone has ideas. Otherwise, even cutting it there and there, and putting a new section in, is difficult because of the structure. This is all part of the radiator support panel, or your core support, if you prefer. Um, she's a mess, let's have a look at this engine, hey? I'm going to have a quick bath. This stuff here comes off pretty easily with a razor blade. I can probably even scratch it with my fingernail. Can't get it off. Still got the crack there, obviously. Can't do much about that. It's had some sort of ooh, pan up. Adhesive on it. Back of the gear bag looks beautiful. Or the front of it, I should say. Um, a little bit of extra cleaning in there, I suppose. There's our brass welshies. We're not touching those. Might plate that. What do you think? You can see dirt there. Haven't got in there very well. Yet yeah, round here is perfect. Uh, around the front. Oh, the good thing, the thing I like about this, is all your plug holes are beautiful and clean. A little bit of tiny stuff on them, but not a problem at all. I'm really, really happy with that. Because spray painting silver rattle can on aluminium is never going to last. Very clean, very clean, very clean. We're going to change all these Welshies. So there's one, two, three, and there's two underneath. Our problem child, which is somewhere. I think that's it there. Um, have to clean up under there a bit more. I'll use thinner for that. All the preps off. Pull this bugger out. That one's I can't see. 
You can just see the bottom of it. That's a tough one though. Those small ones are really tough to get out. And it's right under that belt shaft housing too, so you can't even see it. I think I flicked it. Uh, I felt it flick. Oh, here we go. That's a little bugger there. It's funny, but rust is really funny stuff because this was leaking out of a pinhole there. And you know, it doesn't all rust, it's just it's pitted. And the deepest pit is the one that starts leaking. I've damaged the evidence with my hole. It's there. It's in there. See? It's just, it's funny how it goes. The front one shouldn't be nearly as difficult to do as that one. But now at least, at least I know the size of plug to buy. I don't think I've got any here, I'll have a look. Only a very limited supply, woeful supply of Welshies in fact. None of them are going to fit. I only generally buy them when I need them anyway, so... Where did I get those? Is that a date on it? Bursons, I've been going to Bursons for years, but... Um, don't know, but yeah, I do have to go and buy a few of those. Swing at this back line, this is a shocker tower. I felt like a bloody geologist tapping away, so I'm just going to use my rather large screwdriver. And... Get the... I'll hit it the centre, there we go. So much easier with the right tools, hey? Can't just blast it out. There we go. And... Yeah, it's got rust. Morning, we're going to get one of those. Four of those. And we can stick them in, and it's pretty much the mechanical repairs done to this. The rest of it's just poses and printing it up and painting odds and ends and the block, getting some fasteners replated, making it look pretty, basically. Got to pop the screens out. Uh, the my usual screen guy's not around at the moment, so we're, Andy from the Ford Forum knows a guy. So he's coming to do the XC windows once I find out a quote and I'm happy with it, then he can come out. So what we'll do, I'll have to get a car cover for this, we'll pull both of these screens out, the front and rear, and just make sure it's absolutely mint behind there, then we can put them back in. Um, thinking about this, I don't think we'll paint it yet, I think we'll just touch up what's there, make it look pretty, change those stripes for some other stick on ones that look a bit prettier. Just get the thing back together and stick it on the road. Right, the boy with his finger in the dike. I just took the block drain out and nothing. Oh, oh, kind of disappointed. <laughs> we'll flush the block out. We'll get those other Welshies out. We'll just run water through it, try and get rid of all that horrible rusty water. And we'll just clean up a bit more with some thinner around those dirty spots down there. And then I reckon we can paint him up. I've been doing a bit more cleaning up, and before you think I'm an idiot, I'm going to explain why. Ah, don't like what I'm seeing around the back window. We saw that bit of rusty stuff there, and yeah, there might be some stuff up there. I just need to get the glass out and check it out. And while I've got the glass out, I'm going to weld up where those where the parcel tray's been cut for the speakers. Much, much easier without the speakers there, uh, without the glass there, I should say. Uh, interestingly, these cars have two. Um, members here, they've got this one here and they've got one there. This one isn't on the SE because the rear seat reclines on them. Now I've taken off the side trims, the C pillar trims. I would really like to get some SE courtesy lights for there. I really like those. I've got them in the Fords, um, in the XW, the XC and the XD. I want them in this as well. Um, and of course rear Venetian is going in. We're doing away with the louver so if anyone wants it, contact me. Um, the headlining is beautiful on this. I will take it out if I need to weld up there at all. I'm not sure I will. Uh, what else? Everything's in really, really good condition. Although this bit of underlay from under the seat's got bird seat and looks like vomit on it somewhere. It's pretty gross, so I'll put a new piece of that in, clean that up. Um, what else? What else? What else? Quite a lot, really. Instrument cluster. I've taken it out, and I'll show you why. The hands on the clock are flapping around in the breeze, so I want to repair that. I've had some luck uh, repairing clock movements. 
So if the clock movement's all right, and I can re-secure the hands, we'll do that. Ultimately, pardon me, I really prefer Taco Dash with the digital clock over there. If anyone knows where there's one, please let me know because I'd really like it. That's one thing I do want to get. Now, we're going to paint all the blue from below the waistline. And the reason for that is because I ordered the guard section and I haven't got that mid blue. I'm going to do a much darker blue and I'm going to paint that stripe in. I don't want this stick on pinstripe stuff. It's crap. I've got it on the XD. I don't like it. Um, so I will paint that in. Oh, what else? What else? What else? I just want to clean it up. Take the carpet out. Now uh, let me go in the other side. Engine's looking all right, although I'm going to take the rest of the stuff out of there too. All right. Okay, to this side. I've taken the glove box out. You're probably wondering why, and part of the reason is because I felt like it. But not just that the tabs that hold the glove box in are broken, and that's the reason it's flapping around. And not just that, I want to get all that underlay off under there and have a good look to make sure there's been no rust. Um, I don't think there is. I think it's pretty good, but you never know. Also, by pulling all this out, I can get to those heater hoses and replace them. I want new hoses there. Uh, I took that off. The side pod there I took off because the heater or the defrost um, plumbing that goes up to that vent in the corner there is all out and not feeling too well. So I'll take this center bit off as well. So I'm going to keep going and I'll come back in a moment. Let's pull some carpets out and see what happens. Hopefully it's as good underneath as it is on the top. Get it underway. That looks fairly good. Oh, that is, that can stay there. I'll take the front one out, I think. That's the one I'm actually more interested in. Yeah, he's got a seat stud at the front here. The rest of it should just come up. All right, well, we have had some water in there. Let's just pull him out and take a look, okay? We've had water in here. Whoops. But the underlay that goes against the firewall and up here isn't water damaged, and that corner up there looks really, really good. So I guess I just want to peel some of this back and have a look because yeah, there has been water there. I can see surface rust. And if it needs a patch, I'll throw a patch in. But I think the idea of what we're going to have to do first is just pull this stuff up until we find clean metal. Uh, that's got. That smells of mouldy carpet. The car doesn't smell inside though. You can see moisture's trapped under there, but the rust is so far not bad. Not bad at all. It's, um, let's get this stuff off. I reckon if we get that off, wire brush it, phosphoric acid, and paint it, that'll be the end of the problem. I mean, it's fresh as fresh under there. And on the driver's side, it's really good too. Excellent, it's just this side. So I'm gonna persevere and I'll be back in a moment. Right, time to pull the window out. I've found some rust. I've sabotaged my ruler, one of them, and sharpened an edge onto it. And I'm just, you can hear that, that's rust. But I've sharpened the edge of it. And put a right angle on. So I'm just gonna go around. This is where the rust is in this corner here. So hopefully it's successful and I can pull that glass out. I think I've got the bottom pretty much off because there's probably quite a bit of rust there. I didn't think it was rusty, but guess what? It's a signal, so it is. This is hard. And it's just thick. And I'm just going down. I 
I've been across the bottom, it's loose on that side, but the top's really difficult to get into. There's so much room up there. I'm going to try and get it in the bottom, I mean, from underneath, but the problem with that is the headline is there, and the easiest way to get that out, I could probably get it out through a door, but I thought it would have been easier pulling it out through the back window aperture. Let's try that. Being a warm day, let's settle down again. Yeah, we got some rust, but nothing we can't fix. God, this is messy stuff. Okay, we got the glass out. We'll clean all this off. Let's see what we've got, hey? But at the moment, it doesn't look too good as strong as urethane but I can see a hole there that we might be able to just weld that up but we just get it off like this bit by bit comes off in big blobs that's a crappy sealer that they decided to use on these cars but with luck whoops we haven't got that much work to do although it looks like we have I'm actually not phased by this at all. I just, I don't think it's that bad. If it, you know. What I noticed about it though is people, somebody had put urethane in there. Um, as a secondary way of blocking something up. Like this lip here is pretty mint. If you look there, it doesn't get better than that. But we start getting rust coming up. That's that wire. That I was talking about. This is an oh how oh, this is an original bonded screen too. But because I've scratched it all with a scraper, I'm gonna have to redo it there somehow. So I'm just gonna continue to take this off. Here's a bunch of rust here, which I'm a bit worried about. That was the bit we first saw. Yeah. I think we'll draw these out. These um trim clips because they're, um, this is plastic stuff behind them. And that way we can take that off and we can operate a lot more effectively. And we can just really clean up this window aperture and just make sure we get it absolutely right because at the moment it's absolutely wrong. This is pretty much to be expected. It's all very good around here. Got to clean that out a bit further. It gets very thin here. Might be able to fill those up. Might put a patch in. Not really sure what I'm going to do with that yet. I just want to see how it goes. Um, this is also the same. Very thin. Couple of holes. I think I'll cut that out and make a piece for there. Uh, the bad bit is in this corner here. And it's connected. It didn't look that bad. It reminded me a bit of the XW when I bought it. There wasn't any rust in it, sort of recess window, and of course, when you take the window out, it's knackered. Um, this looks terrible, but it's again not too hard to fix. There's good solid metal on the side there, and good solid metal here, good solid metal there. So make make a couple of patches and um, weld that in. That, that shouldn't be too hard to do. Uh, patches for here and over on the other side where they've cut for the speakers. Again, not a big deal. Um, what about up here? I think that's not too bad up there. This stuff's hellish to get off. Um, I've also taken out, I've drilled out those um, windscreen clips too so I can access a bit better. But it's not too bad. Um, in the car, we're very empty. The floors are excellent. This is the one that was dirty. And it's good. It's all good. Um, some minor pitting. I think what we'll do with this is uh, phosphoric acid. And then we're going to etch prime it and we'll paint it body colour. We're not using that black tar stuff. I hate that stuff. Whenever I see it, I know there's rust underneath it. And a lot of people go for this Dynamat stuff. I mean, it's Sigma Dynamat's dearer than what a whole Sigma is. But um, I don't trust anything where if moisture gets underneath it, it can't dry. And that was the problem with this stuff that was there before. Um, I didn't trust it. It was cracked. It was compromised. And sure enough, there was water underneath. Um, the tunnel's beautiful. And here, I found that ticket. Chrysler Australia, part number, da -da -da -da, mini pad front floor center 18th of February 1981 so I think we'll keep that in a little file for our Sigma um, the rest of it I've taken all those controls off there because if you remember they're not working 
um, there's problems with the cables. Um, the other thing which isn't great, wait, hang on, is heater tap looks like it's weeping and the, uh, I've got to replace the hoses. Might flick the core out and have a look while I've got everything in bed. We'll just see. It's all good. Uh, the good part though, I don't know if you can see up here, is it all looks fresh up there. Um, I don't think there's any inherent problems there. That is clean, that underlay. It doesn't look like it's been water stained. I don't know, I can't see from where I'm filming. It's all pretty good. It's not worth digging up that stuff. Um, that's just looking for trouble. And all I'm interested in doing is fixing the stuff that it's already gone. So what I'm gonna do, this is what we're gonna do. I might do the heater box, I'll see. Um, I'm very pleased with the condition of this thing. It's mad, it's really, really good. There's no issue with it whatsoever. Doors are great. I can't put door trims back on until I get the bailing channels. Um, can't put the cluster back in. In fact, um, well, there's the engine. I'm still doing work on that. Before I forget these things, I'm just gonna get some washing detergent, um, clothes washing detergent, scrub those dirty marks, and I'm gonna pressure wash these. We've got a hot day tomorrow. Just stick them on a fence and they'll be dry. Um, that's what happens with that sealer. It sticks to the windscreen, but doesn't stick to the metal when it rusts. So, taking it on the bin. Um, so, I've taken the cluster out because of the clock. I think I mentioned that before. Um, a few other bits need to be fixed. These trims here weren't fitting very well, and also they were rattling around and cracked. So I've got to do something with that. This is still not a restoration. Please don't think this is too hard. Um, the main thing to do is to focus on what you're doing and uh, just keep it a bit real. Just do what you need to do. I wanted to have a look at that. I was worried about it, um, but now I've seen it, I'm not worried at all. Um, the, all the rest of it's all good. Really, really good. So what we're gonna do is I've got to take the fuel cap off and get a litre of color mixed to match. For now, I'm going to paint the blue bit under here all along so that when I get the guard patches or when it yeah when I get the guard extensions I can weld them in and I'm going to paint that whole blue bit. the pale blue I'm leaving for now I'm going to touch that up try and blend it in it's not going to look great but what do you do and I want to get into here as well those two bits there um, and then that'll make it presentable so that I can go uh, finish it off quickly and go get a roadworthy so the next thing to do is we're going to pop the screen out. I'm getting a new car cover tomorrow for it, so then the screen can come out. I can do the metal work around that. As far as this is concerned, I need to clean it up a little bit more. I'm not quite there yet. And I'm, you know what? I'm thinking, let's cut the whole thing and paint behind the steering box, do the steering box seal while we're at it, take the drag link out, the idle arm and everything, just paint the engine bay. You know what? I just want to do it. It's never going to look right if it's just like that because it's already been painted and it's a bit flaky. So look, hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you later. Bye.